Hello everybody, this is Al with Bobcad, the software company, and today we wanted to take a look at a quick example uh, illustrating some 4-axis wrapping and unwrapping. Now if you're working with a solid model, which is very common, uh, one of the things that you'll have to do is lay this geometry out flat. Okay, so we do have a, an unwrap feature that would allow us to do this, and it's actually quite easy to use. Uh, the first step that I took here is I wanted to measure the geometry so I knew the diameter that I was working with. So I created a new layer and used Extract Edges, and this allows us to uh, convert a surface edge into wireframe. From there I can use my Measure Entity to find out uh, the length and center position, but in this case really I was looking for the radius, uh, so I knew the diameter that I was working with. Uh, now that we have this information, uh, we can go ahead and unwrap our geometry. So we'll go to Utilities and then Unwrap, and this is a very straightforward process. Really the only thing you need to do is define the diameter that you're working with, and then pick the surfaces that you want to lay out flat or unwrap. Uh, once we have that done, we can click OK, and this will give us our wireframe laid out flat. Now in this example, you can see that the geometry was split, so what I would want to do is translate that top half so it meets up with the bottom half. Now you can just use Utilities Translate, which is our word for move, and uh, you have a couple of different methods, uh, pick, enter, pick, pick. In this case, we would want to use pick our start position and pick our end position. Now, if you want to uh, visualize the snap points, you can always shift click, and these blue dots will come up, and those are the snap points, so you can snap from one point to the next. Uh, after you've moved geometry that you want to make sure it's connected, I always do a chain select, uh, make sure the path is contiguous, and we're able to work with it. Really, at this point, we have all our geometry set up, so the next thing we'd want to do is define our stock. We're going to choose cylindrical stock, and then we'll go ahead and define our zero position. In this case, the zero position is going to be on the axis of rotation. Uh, if you are working with a part and you don't want your zero to be on the axis of rotation, you're going to want to make sure to uh, adjust that value with the wrapping axis origin, and you'll define the difference from the world coordinate to uh, the work offset. And that's what this dialog box is used for, and also used to define the diameter of the wrapping group. Now, a wrapping group is this. De designed to allow you to define the diameter that, that you're wrapping to, and then all of your two or three axis tool paths are known to be wrapped to that diameter. So in this case, we're going to just use a regular pocketing routine. We'll go ahead and define our tool, define our uh, step over, depth of cut, and then we'll compute our tool path. Now, visually on the screen, it's just going to look like a regular pocket, and actually when we post it here, you're going to notice that the code doesn't have any rotation moves. Now it is set up for a fourth axis, but the reason why it's posting in three axis is we've selected a three axis machine. So in order to change this, we'll go to cam part current settings part, and we'll change our machine type from a three axis mill to a four axis mill. By making this change, we're loading a post processor that's set up for four axis, and when we post our code, you'll now see that there's rotary moves. Now, of course, having this part laid out flat doesn't really visualize how it's going to be machined, so our logical next step would be to run a machine simulation. This is where you can visually see how the part is going to be cut. Now, if you're a multi-axis customer, you do get full machine simulation with kinematics. Uh, it's really good for allowing you to uh, prove out your setups and make sure the part fits in the envelope of the machine and collisions that you might have. Uh, etc. But if you're just a four axis standard customer, then you won't get the machine simulation. So you would either run in workpiece focus or tool focus. Uh, if you run in workpiece focus on a fourth axis, the the uh, part is going to uh, the tool is going to spin around the part instead of the part spinning around the tool. So in this example, we'd want to be at tool focus, and uh, you can see that the tool is going to run along and follow this. Uh, this slot that we have on this part, we have a rough cut, and then we have a finish cut. Oh, it looks like uh, my default finish tool was a half inch, uh, so I'm going to want to go back and change that. Making changes after you've generated your program is actually really easy to do. You just go back to the feature, edit your parameters, and recompute. 
This is a very quick example of four axis wrapping. Obviously it could get more complicated, uh, but hopefully this does a good job of illustrating just how easy it is to set up a job like this. Now you may have more questions about four axis indexing or wrapping. You can always reply back in a thread or a contact request or on our Facebook page. But again, I really appreciate you guys spending some time with me here today. If you have any more questions, please let me know. And I look forward to talking with you more in the future. Thank you so much.